My name is Danielle Begno. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I recently graduated from Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York. Have you ever wished that you played an instrument as a kid? Or that you had started learning a new language or hobby earlier in life? The freedom to develop and grow personal interests during childhood can feel limited because the material culture of childhood is controlled by adults. In Pixar's 1995 movie, Toy Story, a sheriff doll named Woody and a full cast of other toys belong to six-year-old Andy. Gifted to Andy by his mom, Woody is Andy's favorite toy. But then, at Andy's birthday party, he's gifted a new Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger action figure. So Andy's interests start to shift from sheriff to space ranger. Throughout the Toy Story saga, Andy doesn't choose which toys to play with. His closest companions during his formative years are gifted to him by adults. No wonder he's able to cycle through his toy box so quickly. Adult designers and adult parents have chosen for him which toys, characters, and narratives Andy engages with as his young mind develops. Like the fictional Andy, real children are rarely involved in the toy design process. The design environment of childhood is so critical to their development, yet children are rarely involved in the design of their products. Usually, children only participate as users of an existing product. Sometimes they act as testers of a product that has already been designed, or informants that are briefly observed and interviewed. But in all of these situations, the child's input remains limited and curated for convenience, and the decision-making remains with the adults. But doesn't everyone deserve a say in their own development? Today's children are being raised in a hyper-connected, hyper-digital era, and the best thing we can do to prepare them for this is to encourage them to make connections in all facets of their lives. We need to encourage children's ability to identify unrelated thoughts and experiences and combine them together to create completely new ideas. And if design is gathering information from the world around you, often from different disciplines, and synthesizing it into a new reality, what better way to cultivate children's ability to connect than by involving them in the design of their material culture? 24 years after we first met Woody, Buzz, and Andy, Pixar releases Toy Story 4, where we meet Bonnie. Bonnie has trouble fitting in at her new daycare, but then her teacher gives her a few arts and crafts materials and asks her to make something. This prompts Bonnie to prototype a new friend, a plastic spork with googly eyes and pipe cleaner arms named Forky. Unlike Andy's experience of only participating as the user of a toy, Bonnie is able to contribute as a design partner in the discussion about what toys she should play with. The materials and prompt provided by Bonnie's teacher, combined with Bonnie's design ideation of Forky, are an example of the co-design process. Forky would be the first to tell you that he's actually just pieces of trash glued together. But the relationship Bonnie forms with Forky is the strongest out of all of her toys because she helped design him. Architects and designers across the globe have begun to involve children in the design of their material culture, designing museums, playgrounds, and phone apps. The newest Toy Story movie and the current climate of design scholarship led me to ask, how would toy design change if children were considered co-designers in the creation of their material culture? To explore this question, I partnered with Kids Team, a design team made of children and adults that design using the cooperative inquiry method. Developed by Allison Druin in 1999, Cooperative inquiry makes children partners in the design process. The major idea behind this method is to research with rather than on children. For my time with Kids Team, we researched and designed around the topic of childhood boredom. Mass media tells us that kids today are overstimulated and unable to cope with periods of boredom. But the process of overcoming boredom is important in the development of young minds. It enhances creativity, reflection, self-expression, and problem-solving skills. Over the course of seven workshops, we use the cooperative inquiry method to investigate how children conceptualize boredom and to find ways to help them transform negative feelings of boredom into positive opportunities for creativity. As proof of the cooperative inquiry method, we took our project through traditional industrial design phases like research, 
ideation, prototyping, and testing. And together, we designed a kit of generative shapes to spark imagination and creative play. The children's participation played a huge role in developing our insights as well as the final product. I'd like to introduce Priscilla, an 11-year-old girl who likes reading and playing Roblox. We talked a lot about what objects and activities felt boring to her, and she explained that pencils can be either boring or not, depending on their use. When she uses pencils in art class, it's fun because she gets to draw what she wants. But when doing classwork, she felt that pencils become boring because someone telling her what to do makes her not want to do it. Priscilla showed us that a lack of control played a huge role in her boredom. Priscilla also said she liked to use her imagination to get out of boredom. But it's hard to force myself to imagine, she says, because the real world is distracting. Priscilla helped us to begin thinking about how physical objects might offer the help needed to make the mental transition from boredom to imagination. One week, 11-year-old Adrian came up to me and asked if he could take home some prototyping materials. He said he wanted to use them on the Amazon boxes he had at his house to continue designing at home. Adrian helped us to see that cardboard is an abundant material that is both culturally and economically accessible. After many play tests with children and adults, we developed our final Brain Bridges prototype, a kit consisting of 18 generative shapes made of plastic, rubber, and nylon rope, as well as plastic anchor pieces and the cardboard box that the kit is packaged in. Designed to spark imagination and creative play, the set includes fasteners to connect different boxes together and to attach an array of open-ended shapes. The corkscrew anchors fasten onto the boxes, allow the user to snap on different shapes, and connect different boxes together. So whether you have one box that you attach pieces to, or you have a bunch of boxes that you connect into a giant structure, the kit provides a creative spark for children to transition into an imaginary world where boxes can be anything. The scale and open-endedness of brain bridges encourages others to join in on the building. The co-design spirit of this project lives on when children collaboratively imagine and build with friends, parents, siblings, and others. Involving children in the design process has an impact on how they think, grow, and solve problems. The methodology we use to design as well as the end result of that process show the incredible outcomes of doing so. But BrainBridges is only one small innovation in a sea of problems and possibilities. I hope it encourages others who are interested in childhood development and education to ask for help from the experts, children themselves. Thank you.